the COVID-19 pandemic um, has brought to the table a lot more than just the economic changes and obviously medical changes that we see so frequently on the news. Now that we are starting to settle into our quarantine a little bit more, um, the, as the, the actual life aspect, the mental effects, um, the type of pressure that's put on kids, um, a lot of arousing of government and politics um, within countries and states across different nations and across the world with the loss of jobs on um, that affects family lives and folks with underlying health conditions all have a lot to worry about during this pandemic. And we've seen a lot so far um, from everything from people going crazy being in quarantine to, um, which may be some of us, to you see the peer pressure on kids um, to, you know, to, to succeed in online schooling. And to throw on top of that, you know, the, the recent activity within the government to shut down the country and the states or open up and reopen the country and the states. There's a lot of, been a lot of controversy going back and forth over what the best thing to do is um, for the health of the, our citizens, yet also the best thing for the economy and for families um, across the nation. And that is, those have been contradicting and overlapping a lot. So it's been very hard for the government to find um, and come to an agreement on what the best thing to do is. With unstable leader, leadership, um, and altogether, those shutdowns and such have come with a lot of protesting, um, like we've seen in Michigan and other states in the South, um, where, and specifically Michigan and also in Denver, where people were protesting. Um, and these, these effects, these protests come from, you know, the extreme decline in, um, in un, or extreme incline in unemployment, um, and that, and that greatly affects, you know, family life and family dynamic with, with, with mothers and fathers out of work, um, yet still, you know, trying to feed several mouths, um, three times a day. It brings a lot of stress and um, um, pressure onto that family um, on top of, you know, wor worrying about staying healthy during this pandemic. Um, another thing that has been um, a large area of focus is folks with underlying health conditions and elderly who were from the start said to be much more um, susceptible to the disease. So. I know that a lot of people have grandparents that they're worried about um, to make sure they're staying healthy. Um, and through all this, you know, there's been ups and downs, ebbs and flows um, from everything to, you know, people that think they've been through it all. And with that, you see, you know, 101, uh, excuse me, 100 year old um, World War II veteran who um, did in fact die from COVID-19. Um, but on the other end of that spectrum, you see, you know, 104 year old that Bill Lapshies, um, who recovered from corona, corona, the coronavirus after surviving the Spanish flu, the Great Depression, and World War II. So it's, it's really important to take into the account the mental um, effect that this virus has had on humans across the world and how quarantine and the daily pressures and um, sources of stress have affected each and every one of us and will continue to affect each and every one of us um, for years and years to come.